Yep, yep, yep. Let's get on going. Let's get. We got quite a bit of things to be doing now. Hey, welcome back. This is Satria, C E T R I Y A, and I'm going to be going right into working in some of my comic pages and covering a couple of topics for today. My intention was not to live stream today, but of course, I got the message that a lot of people got the message of, and that is what is going on with YouTube? What is going on with YouTube? Uh, first off, to say that I did not intend to um, miss my update for my comic, but I did, so I'm going to work on it right now, and in the midst of that, I'll chat about that. I'll also later on be chatting about the new um, algorithms that Facebook has put out, that Facebook, which owns Instagram, has put out and things about what's going on with Artist Alley News and a little update about me and Amazon because there is quite a number of things that happened in the last 24 hours actually so um, let's go ahead and get into working with that hopefully you guys enjoy watching this if you're new to my channel because you randomly kind of stumbled over I appreciate you coming hopefully you enjoy my video and check out my other videos and if you like what you see please give a subscribe because now we really need those now but uh more than anything please leave a comment let me know what you like let me know how you enjoy it let me know um any sort of comments and i'll get right into it so while i'm working on trying to finish the tone work of my webcomic crossstar the description to the comic and the link to read the first parts is down below I'm going to go ahead and talk about what was up, what is up with YouTube. So, hopefully you enjoyed this surprise stream of mine. Ah, let's get to this real quick. Alright. So, the word that's going on right now with uh, YouTube is kind of... Well, let's first talk about my first year of YouTube, because it has been my first year just about. We're just one month short of it. And that is basically that um, that it's been pretty good. I mean, it's been pretty good to me. Um, I did not have to deal with like the 10,000 watchers or things to get into the whole partner program. And that's only because I have my account actually for 10 years. I just never really updated my channel for anything other than storage of videos because back then it cost a lot of money to be uploading things. So that's mainly what I've been using YouTube for and then only for this year that I started to really like upload current videos um, and try to be as consistent as possible. I basically just woke up one day and was like, you know what, I gotta do this. So. I'm just going to detail about my first year of YouTube and in comparison as how such an announcement from the company can really affect small creators. Why hello there beautiful owl, thank you for visiting and passing by. Feel free to leave any comments in the chat box below and I'll make sure to try and see it. Sorry if there's a little bit of lag, uh, stuff like that cannot be helped. Um, Streaming does take quite a bit of thing off my internet, so we'll get to that eventually. Alright, so where I was going about. So basically, I was just checking my email this morning before I head out to work. Only then did I find out about um, basically what, what, what YouTube have sent out. It's like anyone under a thousand subscribers will end up 
being not just demonetized but completely taken out of the payment program which is actually not a big deal for me um, I only have roughly 350 subscribers and thank you thank you all for subscribing thank you all for watching my videos thank you all for leaving comments I truly appreciate you guys all the time I, I really appreciate that um, I've also noticed that some of you have been sharing my content and of course as as a thank you and payback, I am currently running, at the time of this recording, currently running a giveaway for some of my um, how to draw comic tutorial books that I no longer use or have grown out of. So if you're interested in any of those, just uh, just uh, go, go check out that video on the giveaway. So let's see what's going on here. Yeah. So, um... I am under the 1,000, but the 1,000 is not too much of an issue because I think I could get that in the next 12, um, 12, 12 months or so. It's the other stuff that's really getting to me. The 4,000 watch time hours. 4,000 watch time hours. That is, from what I heard, a quarter million of watch time minutes. Most of my videos, even if they're longer, I still only average about four minutes watch time per video, right? So that means at four minutes watch time per video, that um, would equal about 60 hits or 60 instances. And if I am making, let's say, 60,000 that is. So let's see here. If I am making three videos, uh, let's say three videos, math. Math is not ever a really good quick thing for me. But let's see here. Divided by Actually, let me go say my average of people average views of my thing is 60. So that's a thousand videos. Huh. Divided by 3 times a week. That is 300. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's, okay, that's sad. I think I probably did my math somewhere wrong in there, but that is something else. That is something else, you guys. Anyways, um, but yeah, that, I don't know, like, one of my videos would have to go viral, especially since they're capping you, that you need to make that 4,000 hours per 12 months. Um, eventually, I mean, eventually if you stick it out long enough, you should be able to, to make those things. Um, especially if you're doing all this stuff, like if you're checking out Roberto Blake or checking out TubeBuddy, um, checking out video creators, video influencers, um, the actual channel is called Video Influencers. And, um, just looking at other channels that are comparable to you and seeing what they're doing to get to where they are. Uh, I know most of them, yes, it's true that most of them got there because they started earlier. Like, I would probably, I, I mean, there are some days that I can't feel like I'm kicking myself because, you know, man, where would I have been if I had kept up to YouTube? But that's not the, that's not a good way of thinking. And really with the more recent stuff that's been happening on YouTube, I'm kind of glad that I started out at this time and not earlier least for some odd reason my channel would have been you know hit by whatever it is um but yeah that would probably be the thing that bothers me the most um the next thing that bothers me is the fact that they've first off when they made the announcement they make it sound like they're doing us a favor i can't stand it when big companies make a change that they know we won't like and say oh well we're just you know I don't know we're just um doing a change just because we think it would do you be do you better do you good or something I don't know it's weird it's like a parent coming and saying here I want you to um, do this thing that is highly uncomfortable somewhat dangerous and definitely painful because it'll do better for you there's very few instances where that even come close to being true but um, that's basically has been the thing that I don't like also. And then the last thing is, if you listen at the announcement, it talks about, hey, I know if you listen to it, it'll be like, 
hey, we're doing it because of advertisers or whatnot. And here's the thing. They took away Super Chat. Super Chat is basically, let's say right now, like for example, um, you'll see, I don't think I have it now. I might have it. I don't know. But basically whenever anyone is live streaming and you want to give them a little money, there's like a little dollar sign next to, um, on your icons, almost near where you do your emojis, there's like a little dollar sign and you could directly contribute to a creator, whatever, however amount you want. So it has nothing to do with advertisers. And yet, because I'm a smaller channel, I may not end up having it. Um, and any other smaller channel may not having it. And I think that really does not even make sense, especially if it's a very specialized channel. I mean, super, super niche, super specialized with a very dedicated following. Now you just took away that option for the hells of it. Hello, Joe. Thank you for stopping by. Feel free to leave any other kind of questions and comments you like. I'm just streaming and ranting about the last couple of updates that's been going on in the last 24 hours, not just with YouTube, but with like Facebook, Instagram, um, some, some news with Amazon and all this stuff. So that's what I'm going to be talking about while I'm working on my comics. But yeah, that's basically the short gist of it. I know there's a couple of creators, especially those with the bigger numbers that are talking about, you know, you weren't making that much money. And again, on my end, that was my immediate first thought was like, when I saw the email, I just first was like, eh, whatever. I only made $2 or whatever. And then I thought, oh, this is going to cause a lot of people issues. Cause I didn't fully read it. I was, I'm a zombie in the morning and I was running to work. Um, but then finding out that they took out the whole super chat thing and then they're trying to pass off the reason why they did it. And it just reminds me of what happened with Patreon um, last year that they were going to all of a sudden roll out this changes saying that it's, it's to better creator payment and it's for you, even though we're not giving you any choice, you didn't ask for this. We're just going to roll out a change of payments without telling anyone like two weeks before they were going to do so. That does not sound kosher uh, all right then have a good good sleep and thank you for stopping by you added to my watch time <laughs> that's the other thing too it's like my first thought was like okay they did that and on my end at two dollars two dollars is nothing but if you think about the hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of channels each of them getting two dollars that starts to be millions of dollars you know that starts to be millions of dollars on their end who knows where they're gonna put that millions of dollars I hope they don't go put it into you know the pockets of people doing a bunch of stupid stunts or highly questionable content as what's been blowing up in the news lately and it's like that did not based on these new terms that did not that does not stop those people if anything it might actually make people either a leave YouTube or B do more content like that for example um, you can't come and say you know yeah I could always do better with my, my thumbnails and whatever but you can't say like my channel doesn't look good you know, um, I've done my best with my audio quality. You can't say that, you know, the content that I make is not good. You can't say that I use a lot of tags. If I actually use um, TubeBuddy, I actually, like, you understand? Like, I actually do the best practices as best as I can. Last year, for my first year, I uploaded on average two videos a week. This year, I'm trying to get it to three, even four videos. I do both live streams and upload videos. I mean, I do what I can do, but not every not every niche is conducive to all of a sudden gaining a bunch of followers. I mean, newsflash, I'm an art channel. I'm an art channel that specifically goes more towards like comics and anime, which notoriously have a low amount of engagement. Like, it's just hard to get. And I don't normally, I do some fan art, but I don't do that much pop culture. So how is anyone going to find my videos? Ah, uh, yeah, start, st I mean, 
I just, I understand that a lot of this is a numbers game, and quite frankly, again, I didn't care about the $2 because I actually uploaded one video, one video on Skillshare, and I regularly receive a check every, every month. It's not a lot, but it's every month I receive the check. So, I don't even, I, I just... I just, I think I'm more peeved at how they just decided to make this change on top of all the other changes they've been making. It was too quick, too soon, and it was highly thoughtless, or maybe it was actually thoughtful. They just don't, they just don't care. And I understand they're having millions of people uploading things, but it, it, just before you make these kind of changes, first off, they only give us until February 20. February 20 is nothing. They should have gave us like a three month thing or something, not February 20. What am I going to do in a month? You know, like what am I going to do in a month? So now you have some of these, some people are trying to like keep people from freaking out and I'm not freaking out. I am not freaking out because I have a full-time job. My full-time job actually is drawing. And like I said, I do if I really was doing this full-time like being independent full-time, I already know not to put, you know, my eggs in one basket. I know this. I know this, but you can't just all of a sudden people who are making this as part of their uh how do you say they're full-time because there's plenty of full-time youtubers that got seriously screwed over randomly because all of a sudden of the mass de demonetization when they were doing perfectly fine things like there's just been so many just like hammering because and the excuse that some people are like well you gotta understand youtube is a business and the advertisers are leaving and yada 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 and it's like it's google Okay, this is them, Amazon, and Facebook are the three companies that has so much information on us. So much information on its user base. I mean, extreme amount of information. And they use that to gain, make money, advertise to us, whatever. Yes, I understand YouTube is amazing being able to upload 400,000, I don't know how many hours per minute is uploaded to the channel. I understand that's a creative feat. But because it's a creative feat, I am highly surprised how quick they sit there and implement such really weird changes without thinking about it. So I just... I don't, I don't know who is it, I don't know who is in the, I have no idea who is in the board of it. And then you have things like, I'm not, and I'm not saying his name because I really don't want random people to all of a sudden find my channel because of the guy that did that dumb thing in Japan. To hear how they ended up doing that and that's only after so many people were going after him. Someone actually did review the, the, the video and was like, no, it's cool. So I'm just like, who is, who is saying this is okay? I don't, I don't know who. Who, and it can't be one person because this is too much money going on. There's too much money on this for it to be just one person. So, if YouTube is worried about um, creators and whatnot, of, or whatever, end up uploading to the channel, the thing about it is, what they're think they think they're do not doing is you know getting clear of all those duplicate channels that upload crappy things or whatever but what you're going to end up doing is a lot of people who would really make good solid content that would be a niche content that over time would be able to develop you know a, a core audience is now might end up switching into a bunch of these kind of videos that we already have a lot of how many tech reviews channels do you need how many uh how to how to do this that and the other tutorial channels do you need how many beauty channels do you need like really how many beauty channels do we need how many um shopping halls and candy halls do we need how many cooking channels do we really need how many um what else how many how to make money online ch channels do we need like do we really need another do we need another like 50 million tai lopez's we don't need those 
But because that is, you know, air quote here, highly searchable content, people's going to end up doing that. Do we really need another stupid, dumb type of stunts like the whole Tide thing coming back up? I probably should not have said that either. But do we really need that? Like, do we really need more channels that do that stuff? But this is what you're going to end up having because now you're saying, well, you need to have 4,000 watch hours in a 12 month period. That is a lot. So I, I don't know what they're thinking. Who knows for the year as I don't know what's going to go happening for the year as for the year goes by for me personally, I'm going to keep doing this anyways, because like I said, I'm not actually doing YouTube for, um, the monetary value, although I did have an idea that once I reach a thousand, I don't know if I reach uh, 4,000 hours of watch time, but before this was announced, I had an idea that once I reach a thousand um, subscribers, I'll no longer provide like the free sketch, sketch request because now that'll be too many people probably requesting, but we'll switch into a $5 sketch request, super chat, super chat, live chat, but I don't get that anymore. So... Yeah, 4,000 hours is 240,000 minutes, and I average about four minutes per person watching my videos and get roughly anywhere from 50 to 100 views, so it's not that simple. And let's just be frank though, there's just been really bad ads. I don't know why no one's not just talking to the advertisers that, let's just be frank, your ads are, are dumb. Like, I do not need to see, just because Valentine is coming over and somehow you figured out that I'm a female, I'm all of a sudden going to go watch Fifty Stage of Grey. I didn't watch the first one, didn't watch the second one. I don't watch romance or dumb romance for that matter. Like, I don't know, what can I say? I'm not going to go watch a proud, if I could just delete every single movie type commercials, I would be really happy. I'm not going to watch your films. Stop it. Yeah, live doesn't do well for not only ads, but it actually doesn't do as well for replay. So you got that going on. But again, it's it's not it's not I will say like I said, I'm only using YouTube at this I've been using YouTube from the start of this year more for organic reach because Facebook is not practically is killing organic reach even more. They just announced that they're changing the algorithm yet again. So now at this point that they're not even, they don't even want like that much video on their content. Um, and that they're pretty much only going to show you your friends and families, um, posts to begin with. Uh, so pretty much business pages are practically you've gone down to zero. Like they're not going to show your stuff at all. So it, I don't, it defeats the purpose of having a Facebook page at all. And considering that my, my family, my family that I hang out with, my friends that I'm with, we don't do Facebook like that. Like we don't, they know like as big as Facebook is, Facebook is practically dying because a lot of the new generation aren't even taken up to, to Facebook. Like anyone around like. 35 and under I don't see them on Facebook like we're on there now and then for some groups, but most of us are not on Facebook <laughs> Yeah, the Wix thing at least the Wix I understand them but it and um, what's the other thing that I've been noticing? So there's like these bars. I think they're like connected to either Amazon or something. I don't know. They're, there's those little shopping cart bars that shows up under videos now. And I'm just sitting there I'm like when I noticed that a couple of months ago, I'm like, really? Really? We don't, we don't need, we don't need to see that. And what's the other thing that's been going, okay. I can't stand any more of those random Korean game um, commercials like yes I know I'm watching an anime video but no I am not gonna play your anime whatchamacallit dress-up game that's not what I'm watching this video for 
unless you're advertising another show, this defeats the purpose. That too, like it gets on my nerves. Oh, and the non-skippable 15 minute obnoxious ads. I hate it when I'm going to like Gary V, right? Because I do follow him. But just because I follow Gary V does not mean I'm going to watch Ty Lopez or whatever that other dude that started editing his ads to look like Gary V ads. And I immediately noticed the difference. It's like, I don't want to see you. I don't need to see you 50 times in one day. And I also understand why an advertiser actually wants to stop being on YouTube because I would see that as a waste of money. That would irritate me if the same person is getting hit by that ad. So that means you count one person in one day, like 50 impressions per day. But if that person got impressed upon 50 times that one day, they will. that means they don't want my stuff. So why did you waste my advertisement budget on one person that obviously never clicked on movie ads or never clicked on business ads like never clicked on them so why would you waste my impression money on that person so i i get why youtube is getting a squeeze they're getting a squeeze to us creators because they really they keep on being okay with people that should not be okay in the first place and then they're wasting advertising money on things that really like how did you let this how did you let this go by? How did you let this get to this point? It's beyond inappropriate. Beyond inappropriate. And honestly, the whole state of advertisement needs to be changed anyways. Like, I understand that things need to be paid somehow with ads, but let's just be frank. Like, ads don't really work. They just, they, they don't because almost always the companies with the big enough ads, like I already know you exist. Like Liberty Mutual, I know you exist. I already know you exist. You don't need to make an advertisement for me. So, it's just unfortunate. Anyhow, I think I spent like a good, what, half an hour ranting on, on YouTube so let's go rant on the other company, like I was saying, Facebook and Instagram. So yesterday I found out on a post on some, some posts on some artists channel that I follow. And that is first, let me complain as a, as a person who actually use Instagram as in, as a, just a viewer, like a user of Instagram, not someone who posts, but a user of Instagram. I am really irritated at the fact that they've changed out where you can't see the post in chronological order. I like to keep my post in chronological order. I don't like the fact that I don't get the choice not to see my post in chronological order. Like they're not giving me any choice. And uh, that is really irritating. And then add to the fact that they're just gonna all of a sudden, based on what I follow previously or something, they're gonna start sneaking in random sponsored posts. Not the paid sponsors, but just random recommended some recommended junk or whatever into it and I'm just like if I did not find or follow this person why would you why would you just all of a sudden sneak that in honestly I I don't think you two realize that the constant changes they're making is gonna lose their money anyways and I think that advertisers felt like they were paying too much money for YouTube anyhow. And most advertisers, at least in the U.S., pretty much are targeted to, like, a very young male demographic audience anyways. And or a, like, mid, like young to, to almost, like, middle-aged woman de demographic. Because the woman demographic, apparently, mostly buy beauty and clothes. So they always advertise to them. And then the guy demographic, I don't know, they just want to advertise the guy demographic. Don't I don't know. That's what they say. I don't get it. They're just not being creative. Um, and I think we're just going to, since YouTube doesn't really get that, especially since it's becoming more and more international, I can just see this kind of getting, kind of, we're going to see more changes. We saw a lot in this year. We're going to see even more changes once, uh, whatchamacallit, Big Papa YouTube really gets, not YouTube, but Google gets into YouTube now and start wondering what's going on.
but uh, I digress. As I was saying with um, Instagram thing, so as a viewer, that gets on my nerves because I really, I am too much of a particular person. I am not a snowflake, but sometimes I feel like it because people are keep on making an assumption about me. Add to the fact that I actually don't put that much of my information online anyways. I just don't. I don't need to. I tend to regularly clear my browser or anything because I like to have a purity of search so that way I know what I'm actually getting. Things like having cookies on your browsers when you're trying to pay for a plane ticket, all that all that mess and junk, I don't like that. I don't appreciate that. So advertisers have no idea what to do with me because um, I almost never search anything that is a typical advertiser anyways to begin with, i.e., for example, movies. Like I don't look up... Yeah. Honestly, you probably just look up some kind of business account or something that relates to business or somebody keep talking about business or blogging or a tech review. And since Wix keeps on sponsoring tech review people, all of a sudden you'll just get a bunch of text review. Um, I know... I looked up, what was it? I looked up um, Isaiah, which is a influencer marketing type collective thing. And I kid you not, for like four or five months, I kept getting ads for Isaiah. And here's the thing, if I'm already on your site, I, I understand the advertising retargeting thing, but if I'm already on your site, that means I already know you're there. And unlike the regular ethos that come about with people saying, well, you have to remind them that you exist, so you have to keep on sending them ads. I actually don't, uh, that doesn't happen to me. I pretty much remember whether I'm going to use you or not. Um, so there's those kind of things. But um, where I was getting it back to. Yeah, so pretty much Facebook is dead and been dead to me. Um, Instagram, now as a as an actual content promoter, poster on Instagram. I do appreciate the non-chronological hours and this is because I just was not about to get into the bandwagon of posting three times per day on Instagram. I don't, I have a life, I have other things to do and again to be frank, I don't make stuff that can easily go viral or is highly searchable on Instagram. I don't I don't make travel fo photos. I'm not a photographer. I don't make travel photos. I don't make food. Um, I don't make beauty. I am not an athlete. I don't. Uh, I don't make uh, what you call it fan art that much to really be posting on Instagram. You know, it's all of these things. I don't make really pretty faces and cute art. I don't make like there's so much stuff that is typical of Instagram posts, and I don't like using their filters all that much either. I like my photos to be natural on its own, I edit it myself. Um, I'm actually, I'm a, I'm a, a computer, like a, a CAD design illustrator at work. So I use both Photoshop and Illustrator. I just don't use Illustrator for my comics, but um, what I do is I do a bunch of repeat patterns um, and illustrative, illustration patterns for uh, clothes, so basically any kind of like illustration, print, design that you see on clothes, um, plates, right now I'm in plates, so plates, beach towels, um, tablecloth, cups, uh, things from men's ties to, you know, PJs and socks and stuff, so I actually, that's why I say I work as a, an actual full-time artist for a company so by day I am just drawing on demand I'm all day today I was working on um, cups and stuff so uh, but yeah it's um like I said I don't have that time to be posting three times a day on Instagram even when I have extra art for Instagram I don't even I don't I'm not gonna sit there and be like oh I should post on Instagram like I'm not a family I'm not from a family that take a bunch of photos you know, the other day my brother was asked at work, he's like, oh, do you have a photo of your sister? And he's like, no, I don't have a photo of my sister. We just don't do that stuff because we actually believe in living in the moment. I don't have to share every every five minutes of my life with people online that I may or may not get to see. And quite frankly, I don't want you wasting all your time looking up 
post on Instagram. Go in and go and enjoy your day. Go go and live life. Um, check in now and then and enjoy it like I do, but you don't have to be on there like 24-7. So as as a poster of, of Instagram, I'm glad of the changes. Um, but as far as Facebook goes, it's dead to me. And since Facebook does own Instagram, it's just a matter of time before they, they screw over that platform. Even though I know they've bought that in some other couple of platforms because... To be frank, no one's going to be on, no one's, you know, no one's going to really be on Facebook pretty soon. The people, the, the people that are on there, they're already grandfathered in or whatever, but they're not going to like, it's incredibly hard to get people off Facebook. Facebook doesn't allow you to, they pretty much do everything they can to keep you from taking people off their platform. And then YouTube penalizes you because you put an outlink. It's like, No. like no it's way too controlling I think businesses really need to get over themselves and stop being so controlling I get you want to make money but we're we're in a new we're, these are different times stuff that you could have done back in the 1950s you know era is not going to work with new technology like that that's not how our brains you know that's not how users use stuff stop The thing about it is that, the thing about it is that Instagram, you need 10,000 followers to get the swipe up feature. Um, and it's incredibly difficult to get people off of Instagram. Um, I've been on Instagram for about two years now and I only have 240, about 240 followers off and on. Um, and that's just to be frank, that's how it is. I again I don't do anything that would be incredibly viral or whatever. I just don't. Cause to me that defeats the purpose. If I have to make content that I would not normally make, then there's no point in actually doing it. And I just accept the fact that people just perhaps don't like me. And now that I don't get as much um engagement as some other places, now they're going to penalize me even more for that. And it's like, all right, I mean, what can I say? You can't, I can't control that. So, all in all, let's shift into the other news and platform, and that is Amazon Tube. Yeah, it seems like uh, Amazon finally decided they want to make their own weird. I don't know what they said, but they they're eventually they basically um already signed up the do domain for that, so they might become uh, the new competitor to YouTube. Will we shall see how much that actually happens. Um, I really don't like the name Amazon Tube. It's like they could have been like Kindle Media. I think Kindle Media would make more sense. I don't see the the point of this, calling yourself Amazon Tube, but whatever. Um, and. We, we shall see how that comes about. I know they just recently deleted or stopped doing Anime Strike because they did it in a way that most people... Like, why would I pay for Prime and then on top of that, pay more for my anime subscription? That makes zero, makes zero sense. And of course, because of that, no one was bothering to pay for their subscription. It's like, what did they, what did they expect? This is a community that, for the most part pretty much pays bootleg and the only reason why Crunchyroll survives is because you can actually watch it without having they give you they let you watch the videos for free and it's now that more and more anime fans have grown to a certain age that they can actually afford to pay for subscription and most of them by the time you finish paying for Netflix and for Crunchyroll what is the point of paying yet another another company that you're already paying prime for separate for for, for the anime it made no sense. So um, some of us, me included, um, we'll see what Amazon Tube end up becoming like. Uh, I'm totally fine with having yet another platform to upload my video. And if anyone can be a contender, it would be Amazon against um, against Google because they're like not the I guess the second most search search engine because everyone searched there. And the difference between uh, 
YouTube and Amazon is that the people on Amazon already have the mindset to buy. Like you're there to purchase something or window shop or something. You know, you're already in that ecosystem to purchase something. So we'll see what the limitations are for you to get into that. I had recently applied for the Amazon merch and they just, they did decline, but they, they invited me to uh, resubmit. And I think it's because they've by the time they got to my account, they've changed something. So I'm going to try and resubmit into the Amazon merch. But uh, before we get into that whole that whole section, I have been following with Amazon Kindle and a lot of authors with the indie authors community and stuff like that. I post I have um, uploaded one book to to Amazon um, for their Kindle and another book for printing. It was a coloring book and the other one was the first book in my story. And um, there's been just a lot of changes, a lot of changes to Kindle that I don't think people realize that it sounds cool that, oh, we're gonna finally have like a competitor to, to YouTube, but um, it's not like Amazon is, is nice. <laughs> like, it's not like Amazon is nice because what they've done to the Kindle people, I think they're in Kindle 3.0 right now. First off, they make you, they require you to be exclusive to them to begin with. And they've changed out the royalty payments three times. And they, if YouTube is complaining, Amazon has to deal with so many bot and spammers all the time. And whenever they do a correction, they exactly like YouTube, they'll just, just blunt blunt hit everything and everyone at the same time and next thing you know people who've been selling you who are making six figures man six figures a year all of a sudden just dropped ex exponentially they've been on the site for years but amazon doesn't think about that they just like hit everything and then you have to review your stuff and then you're missing months of 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 um of income and I just, I am so sorry for those people. And then your rankings go down. And I've just heard some really, some horrid, horrid carnage. Things like what used to be 70% royalty. Now, it's been found that they're not changing it to 50%. But, you know, they're a monopoly in this area. So why wouldn't they change it to 50%? And then you have what they're doing with the exclusivity for, uh, whatchamacallit, um, audiobooks. And now that uh, both, well, both Google and Amazon has um, things like the voice activation, like Alexa and stuff like that, which through that, and it was shown in Gary Vee, all he said was, you know, Alexa, buy me toothpaste or something. And I'm sorry for anybody who has Alexas, excuse me, but like buy me toothpaste or something. And then it'll just order it, but you didn't tell it what brand you want. So what is it going to do? It's going to give you the top sponsored brand. So that'll be the same exact thing. So if everyone's thinking that, oh, you you know, Amazon's finally going to be a competitor, it's like, eh, I wouldn't say that necessarily. But again, you know, if it's another area for me to reach, especially since from there, I wouldn't have to do an external link you know, I don't have to do an external link to get people to go to my shop, then that'd be cool. But then what if too many people become dependent on Amazon? A lot of people are already dependent on Amazon. A lot of people already got screwed by them. Things like, uh, they have this feature called page flip feature. So let's say you order a digital book and you want to flip through your pages. There's a way for you to read the entire book after you've, um, borrowed the book from Kindle Unlimited. And it doesn't register that you read the book. So that person that you read the book of never got your payment ever because page reads got screwed over. And since it doesn't register you reading, their rankings get screwed over. Or like when they decided to um, stop, not stop, but they basically they have this thing. If you notice, it says verified purchase. And I understand why they did that because you can easily like farm out reviews to someone. But they basically uh, said that unless you bought it from Amazon, you don't count as a verified purchase, even if it's a legitimate purchase. And the problem with that is a lot of, of authors would send things out to their advanced readers. Well, guess what? There's no point in doing that now because those reviews don't show up until uh, until like the fifth or third page of reviews. So then people just don't see it anymore.
All right, you go to sleep, Joe. Thanks for passing by. I sorry about the whole Amazon thing too. But uh, yeah, like I don't expect. Let's not even talk about the amount of knockoffs that comes up on like Amazon merch, and I think with. Amazon tube however they decide to structure that will yet again be yet another instance of people just abusing the system like the only way for them not to abuse the system and I understand they're doing this whole learning algorithm stuff is is basically how should I say that is basically I mean they would need people they would need people and they would need a good caption system and they would probably say, okay, if you're going to upload a video, it needs to be a minimum of 15 minutes or something, which is very easy for me to do, but like they would pretty much, I mean, <sighs> this would just be crazy. That's all I can say. There's just too much to too much to go on. Too much to go on. Too much craziness. Point is, I doubt, I know people are like, maybe Amazon would have a contender or whatever, but it ain't going to happen. Uh, Google already owns YouTube. Uh, Facebook already owns, I believe, both Twitch and Instagram. And what's, what's, honestly, what is left? What is left? As an artist, um, who knows? I might end up going back to DeviantArt. <laughs> I'll still post video, that's not the thing, but I'm like, okay, I'll go back to doing art or something. But it's been, it's been, it's been unfortunate. Unfortunate, seriously. So yeah. Um, last titty bits for the video, I would say is, mm, mm, Artist Alley. Yes, I think I'll talk about Artist Alley. We'll talk about Artist Alley. So what's been going on with Artist Alley? I have been, um, I have been waitlisted in Artist Alley. Well, first off, if you guys are not on the Artist Alley form, on um, Facebook, you don't have to be on it, but um, if you're not, you didn't notice the post I was talking about the record number of people signing up for Artist Alley. And the reason why I'm including this in this section, because again, it, it deals with all of us as small creative, especially if you're in the uh, actual creative, creative fields, such as um, arts, crafts, film, and all that good stuff. Uh, and that is a lot of artist alleys have been having record and craft fairs have been having record number of people signing up. And on the one hand, you might be thinking, oh, so more people is getting to their dreams. But there was a comment that was posted on that form. And that comment was, um, I, how much of it has to do with the fact that so many of us younger people, regardless of what major you got into, unless you got into like medical and even medical as even medical, because I, medical is not something you could just waltz into. Um, certain degrees, you know, let's say you took business degree or something, that a lot of people are struggling to find work. And while you're not being able to find work, you're just trying to f figure out a way to like make ends meet or some or something or another like that. So there's a wondering, there's a comment wondering if a lot of this has to do with the fact that. Just a lot of people are just not capable of getting work, so they're going into Artist Alley thinking that they can make some sort of bank or some kind of coin or something, um, and that they might as well put that effort, you know, the amount of hours that they did and put that effort into uh, building up their own name and recognition and studio and whatnot. So I've tried out for about four for conventions, um, but really, uh, the one that I really wanted to get into, because I haven't got, I've been, 
denied getting into it for three years now, which is Anime Boston. Um, and then Otakon, I got waitlisted, but since that one's lotto, it doesn't bother me as much. And it's been like off and on that I would get into that convention. Um, but I've only went there once, but I got into it twice. And, um, right now I'm on hold for Denver Comic Con, but already people mo mentioning how much they couldn't get into Denver Comic Con. There's massive waitlist for like Momocon and stuff like that. Like all the good ones are definitely getting massive waitlist for it. Um. But yeah, this notion or the thing that's happening is that too many people, A, are going into Artist Alley, think they can make a quick butt, buck, or B, they have to go, they feel they have to go into Artist Alley because where else are you going to make some kind of income, especially in today's world with messed up YouTubes and screwy Amazons. Um, add to the fact that more and more this year, I feel like there was even more weird stuff going on at conventions in terms of... Uh, we had the thing that happened, what was it, a Phoenix Comic Con or something? And then you had the drama that happened with a couple of conventions and the way they were handling their artist alley. Uh, there's just been so much weird uncertainty. So I will say that at first I was thinking I was just going to go ahead and do some panels at conventions, like host a panel or two, whatever. But most conventions do not give you back your ticket unless you're making a lot of panels, maybe. And for me, since I'm spending most of the day doing the panels, which is part of their thing, I don't know why they can't just spot me a 35 for their ticket. Um, I do hope to get into more conventions this year, but I know conventions is not going to be like my mass. Like that's not where I pay my bills. Fortunately for me, that's not where I pay my bills, and I knew early on that I did not want to keep doing this. But the main reason why I know that I wasn't too much into Artist Alley, like, in terms of trying to make that into my moneymaker, is the fact that, um, I don't, like I said, I don't draw much fan art. That is not my bread and butter. Um, most people that make bank either have been on DeviantArt for ages, and they gain a following because they were associated with something or another. Maybe they were associated with Gaia or whatever. Um, and they're good. Of course they're good. And or they make a lot of fan art. So convention, this making bank at convention thing is just not my, it won't, it just won't happen. It just won't. So, so, um, I do feel, I really do feel sorry for a lot of people for this case because like, I don't think people realize how much work goes into making, into dealing with making inventory and doing stuff for conventions. Um, what was it? Late last year, just before, in November, yes, November, I had run a Kickstarter and I did not, um, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't get anywhere near my goal, and my goal was a simple $875, and I did not make the $875, and it could be various re reasons why I did not, and I could go ahead and make a question mark about it, you know, question whether or not why I didn't, but um, the thing is, the thing is, and excuse me, of... I've just been talking for, wow, I've been talking for about an hour now, jeez. Yeah, the thing is, I know for the work that I do, it's just going to be a slow burn anyways. Um, I could try to do even more or less, but it is what it is. Either way, um, but I know for many people, especially conventions are changing rules. More and more local municipal offices are walking down conventions because they know there's being money being made and people aren't paying their taxes right now and all these good stuff. So just a quick intermission. Um, anyone who's stopping by and if you're new to my channel, thanks for visiting you guys. I'm just quickly doing a little chat rant while I'm working on my webcomic artwork. Uh, so feel free to post any kind of like questions or comments about any of the topics I'm talking today. And today's topic it was dealing with like the YouTube uh, demonetization of small channels, um, Facebook and Instagram changing of its algorithm, um, Amazon coming onto the scene with Amazon Tube, and of course currently right now talking about uh, Artist Alley stuff. But, uh, so don't be shy, you know, posting in your, your comments.
anyhow, going back to Artist Alley. But, uh, yeah, so basically I don't really do fan art. And when conventions start selling out in less than a minute, it, it, I mean, you can't depend on them anyways. Things like um, them changing the venue and then when you find out that you're outside or you're in a parking garage or, you know, for whatever reason, they inflated their numbers so they weren't telling you the truth. There's just so many things, so many hurdles that goes into um, dealing with conventions. And I just want people to be weary about thinking that they all of a sudden this year become Artist Alley veterans. Like, you can't do Artist Alley full time. It doesn't work that way until you have enough people that is following your work. Like, you need to have... You need to have the people in the numbers. You cannot just all of a sudden wake up and start doing um, Artist Alley full time. Um, with that, there are a couple of places, a couple of really good, um, whatchamacallit, podcasts to listen when it comes to that. Actually, let me go ahead and show you guys real quick a, a good place, a good podcast that I like, and it's called Surviving Creativity. I mean, this is, like, a really good podcast. I love the title of it all. They may swear from time to time, I believe, but I think you guys need to, you need to, you need to be following this podcast. Let me go and show it real quick. So here it's called, um, Surviving Creativity, and it's, I am linking to the, whatchamacallit, the Patreon page, but it's actually free. You can listen to the podcast for free. And these guys have been doing it for for maybe at least two decades. They've been doing web comics and, um, you know, independent stuff for at least two decades. And they will go in and talk about, and talk about so much, just so much stuff that they had to deal with. And for them, they had to deal with, uh, for example, the recent cut in advertisement revenue because of the fact that, well, most of us watch things with ad block. That's just the way we are. So, I definitely suggest you go and check them out. Um, their most recent video or podcast was talking about, um, whatchamacallit, whether you should do conventions or not. And, yeah, there you go. Had a little bit of a misspat by there. Whether you should do conventions or not. So, take a listen because I feel like a lot of times people overly talk positivity in a lot of these things. And it's good to be positive because that's what my channel is about. I believe in being positive, but I also believe in being practical and, you know, just a realist in things because I feel it hurts. Not I feel. I know it hurts more when someone says, oh, this and this and that and the other and it's all positive. And then you go and you get hurt. And then you're thinking, well, did I do something wrong? Am I not good enough? Am I not worthy enough? Am I just not smart enough? Was I, you, know, you start wondering what's going on because they didn't give you the full picture as to what it takes to deal with certain, to do the certain thing. So... I, I hope that the folks that are all of a sudden going into Artist Alley, I just hope they're not making, they're not wasting so much money. I really, really hope that they're doing their research. And it takes, it takes, it takes money to do your research. It really does. Huh. Which goes into a full circle back onto the first original topic and that is the whole YouTube demonetizing small channels things. Now, going back to the whole notion of positivity and on all that junk, there's people throwing out things saying that, oh, well, if you haven't reached your 1,000 viewers or whatnot and, you know, there's other ways to diversify your income and, you know, this, that, and the other, there's other ways to monetize your people on your videos and let's, okay, let's be real people. Let's just be frank. If, and this is by proof of my recent failed Kickstarter and a number of other projects that didn't go forward. If you do not have a thousand subscribers, 1%, because typically the conversion rate is from one 
to 3%. 1% of 1,000 is 10 people. 10 people will not all of a sudden help pay for your, uh, whatchamacallit, will not all of a sudden help pay for your rent. Unless these people are have so much money, they there's one one or you know they all giving you a very high dollar amount. You know, ten people will not all of a sudden help pay for your rent. Um, ten people will not all of a sudden you know you can make a bunch of merchandise on it. Um, you're not gonna sell a bunch of merchandise on it. Um, you'll sell more than just just doing YouTube. But you're not going to make as much money as some. Of, I feel like some of these people are making these comments as though. All of a sudden, you know, well, here's the alternative to making money off of YouTube. And if you do not have a strong enough following, you just don't have a strong enough following, period. That's it. Because if you had a strong enough following in, let's say, places like Twitter or Tumblr or even DeviantArt or whatever, more people would have subscribed to your channel and you would have reached the 1,000. That's just the way it is. You would have reached a 1,000. There is no, there is no, um, there is no, well, you could, you know, go into a, there's people talking about like, oh, you can use affiliate marketing and whatnot. And yeah, it's true. You will make more than YouTube one random day. Someone decides to go and pay for the, you know, pay for whatever service that you're doing your affiliate market on. But the thing is, if you go a little bit too crazy with stuff like that, people will be turned off on you. I would be turned off on you if every single time I'm on your channel and all your links is dealing with affiliate links or buy me and support me and, you know, you know, like all this stuff, like once in a while, yeah, I'll ask, you know, come support me in some project, one-off project or whatever. Um, uh, and that's fine. But to constantly be like, Hey, please come. And, you know, should, should I be getting paid for my creative work? Yes. Yeah. Should creative people be getting paid for their work? Absolutely. But the methods that some people are coming up with and you can tell like most of the people talking about this in the field of the whole mass demonetization all fall into like most of um all fall into most of the channels that I know is going to end up showing up more on YouTube and that is channels like I'm a travel blogger or I'm a beauty blogger or you know a uh, random pop culture infographic um channel or this is how you do this, a bunch of tutorial channel, whatever tutorial, a bunch of how to make money online or how to become rich type videos, a bunch of tech review videos, a bunch of, like, we're going to be getting so many samey videos, it's, it's unfortunate. It'll just be unfortunate because, quite frankly, there's a number of channels that I follow that are small channels, um... I have not heard of Philip DeFranco until this year um, because, quite frankly, I'm not into the whole follow pop culture thing. But now it's like so much things has been changing that I'm like, OK, let me let me go, you know, check them up or whatever. Like, you know, channels that that quickly grew up because of, OK, a channel that talks about how to make your numbers, how to gain subscribers or whatever on YouTube is definitely gonna blow up. It blew up last year, it'll definitely blow up next year. You know, channels that talks about, or that makes you do a bunch of dumb pranks, those are gonna be the channels that's gonna be like, the ones that are gonna be the one that's gonna keep being made even more so than they were being made before. And we really don't need that much more channels that talk about this. Unless you're coming with a very unique point of view, there is no reason for you to make another copycat channel. But then that's where you get your views because that's where you could get your suggested videos. Like, what is unique about those channels? Like, do we really need... A, honestly, there was way too many gaming channels coming, popping up that weren't providing anything unique. And then all of a sudden, YouTube decided to massive, you know, mass um, demonetize those channels. And now what? Like... Now we have less people doing the gaming channel, but it still doesn't, it still doesn't help what has been done. Like, now they all go to Twitch. 
And before anyone can tell you, oh, well, why don't you try Twitch? It's like Twitch is very much a gaming platform. Are people far more popular than me do not do not gain much of any numbers on Twitch. So, yeah. Ah, so yeah, that has been a very long, massive rant on my end. <laughs> I hope you don't mind of all that quick art and chat I decided to throw up here. Um, typically, I do do art and chats on Wednesdays and Sundays, but it's just that today was not supposed to be an art and chat only because I did one on Monday because I didn't feel well for Sunday. So the next art and chat will be next Sunday. I'll more than likely will be finishing this up. Uh, because I am super late on this and I should have been done with this a while ago and uh, hopefully get into uh, finishing up the second half of chapter two of cross star it should not take me two years to do you know a chapter of a comic but sometimes that's that's just life you can't you could only do what you can only do right so for those of you who are new to my channel again I say thank you for coming by Thank you for checking me out. Hopefully you find my content interesting enough to subscribe. Um, and if you are a subscriber to my channel and you enjoy my work, I'd really appreciate it if you share maybe your favorite, vid your favorite videos out of the ones that I've made, perhaps on other social media. Just share it with your friends if you find it interesting. Um, at any video, feel free to leave a comment of perhaps a video request, maybe a tutorial request, or... Um, what you'd like to see more on the channel and I'll see if it matches with um, my plans and again I appreciate all all of my subscribers I truly appreciate it you guys I unlike other platforms like Facebook or whatnot is I can't find any sort of organic reach but uh, that's pretty much what YouTube is for at this point even though it's very slow organic reach it is still somewhat of an organic reach unlike other companies and uh, I plan to to push hard on this platform for the year so um, all depending on health hopefully I get anywhere from three to four videos in in a week because I gotta sit and draw anyway so why not sit you know sit and draw and chat and uh, uh, I appreciate you all hanging out so I'm gonna go ahead and end this stream for now and I will see you guys in the next video.